And joining us now to discuss is Kristan Hawkins, president of Students for Life Action. Kristan, welcome back. Great to see you as always. A lot to get to today, but first, um, help us unpack the executive order that President Biden signed today. Your thoughts on it. Yeah, well, I mean, with the Biden administration, everything is up. Gas prices are up, food prices are up, inflation is up. And they want to see abortion numbers go up. It's it's actually shocking to see the fact that we are still, I was in Walmart this morning before my kids woke up getting groceries, that we are still experiencing a baby food shortage in our nation. But do we see the president signing something saying, hey, we have to feed America's children right now? No. He's signing now his second executive order with an attempt to get more children killed in the womb. Um, and it's it's a political stunt, to be honest with you, um, to help boost his poll numbers, to boost his standing with the most radical part of the Democratic base. You know, I want to go back. Uh, we mentioned earlier the vote in Kansas. I want to go back to that and get your reaction. Uh, were you surprised at all that the amendment failed? You know, we knew this was going to be an uphill battle from the very start. When I started door knocking with our team back in May on the ground, um, you not, you're not going to erase 50 years of Roe versus Wade and the damage that, and the confusion that Roe has caused uh, in, in one vote. And I think we saw, especially in Kansas, where the pro-lifers were outspent by more than seven digits. All of Hollywood uh, and the left were incited to descend upon Kansas and to keep Kansas bloody Kansas. And they used deceptive language. I mean, I was watching TV ads where they would tell folks to vote no, but they had uh, pictures of folks with masks on. And they said the words medical freedom. They never talked about abortion. Uh, and they almost made it seem like if you voted pro-life, you were pro-mask mandates. And it was so confusing and purposely so. Um, and we see this all the time in the abortion lobby. They never want to actually discuss the real issue. And sadly, I think voters in Kansas uh, are going to soon learn that they were duped by the predatory abortion uh, agencies who are looking to keep Kansas bloody because they know uh, they can have women drive from out of state, from states that move to, to make abortion a thing of the past and protect women. They're going to profit off of those other states and by keeping uh, this um, uh, somewhat hidden, you know, in invisible ink constitutional right to abortion. You know, Kristen, before I let you go, I want to talk about this. You mentioned that you were out there in Kansas, you know, door knocking. And I understand um, while out there canvassing for this amendment uh, that one of your students was physically assaulted. Can you tell us more about this incident? And also, how is she doing right now? You know, Grace is doing okay. Uh, she went to a home, and we go in groups and neighborhoods, and a woman said, I, I don't think you want to talk to me. So Grace said, okay, and left. And her adult daughter, her 37-year-old adult daughter, then ran outside of the home and began beating Grace, punching her in the face, throwing food at her. Uh, Grace had to run to the car, uh, lock herself in, uh, and then call our team members who were on the ground with her for help. Um, she, you know, we, we took her to the ER. Are. We got her checked out. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm the Students for Life mom, uh, so we wanted to make sure she was okay. She was fine. She had been experiencing headaches and body soreness, as you can imagine. But she, to her own credit, Grace got out there the next day and continued door knocking because she knew uh, just how important uh, this battle really is in Kansas and to speak the truth about how we should value them both. Um, and so it, it, was a, it was a sad thing. We've never seen this level of extremism when we've door knocked. I mean, I've obviously received death threats and, um, you know, we received them in the office and we've had, you know, massive protests against myself and other Students for Life leaders on campuses. But to see this level of violence that was committed against Grace, it was unbelievable. She pressed charges. Uh, the woman has been arrested and we are meeting with lawyers uh, this week in Kansas City to discuss pending, um, pending action because I think a message really 
really needs to be sent to the abortion industry. And this is something we're very concerned about as students head back to campus this fall. The increased level of violence and vandalism that you know we have seen against our own parishes, against pregnancy centers this summer, and what the left has called the summer of, of rage. Um, we're concerned that this is going to continue on. I mean, it, it's it's unbelievable. I was talking with some board members earlier today. You know, we now have full-time security guards. I have to have security when I'm on campus. But sadly, we can't have security guards anytime we go out to exercise our First Amendment rights to speak. And so we need to show the left, uh, and especially the abortion movement in this country, you know, that, you know, while they advocate for violence in the womb, uh, and we're not standing for it, but we're, we're certainly not going to stand for it when they, when they advocate and commit violence against our own advocates out in the streets. Yeah, well, Kristen, please l let her know we're praying for her, praying for all of you right now. And thank you for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.